Hey, Fred, how's it going? Hey, great, great. Well, the world is having a hard time, but we're, we're okay. I know, we're <laughs> safe. A little sound cloud, okay? You're safe in Los Angeles. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I think mm-hmm. it's been the second, we're in the third mm-hmm. month now. So, yeah, everything's getting used to it. Um, yeah. Worried about the world as mm-hmm. everybody else is, so, you know. But we can make yeah, it's some, really scary some good on, story on stuff today, hopefully, and, and see what comes of that. Hopefully. Now, you haven't done this with me before, so I'm going to give you a little intro to what I was hoping to do today with you, and that is to uh, okay with a, with a – I call them issues. Uh, I use them for okay. story development and – to give you an example of what some issues look like, here are some that I did um, with other people in the past. Uh, for example, okay. what if you could get your dreams from a bespoke service? That was one idea that came up. Um, what What's if, a bespoke service? Oh, the idea being that if you could have your dreams made for you by somebody else. So these are sort of potential oh, sure. story okay. ideas and they, they all start off with a what oh. if question uh mm-hmm. another one here is uh what if your death party really sucks that came up last meaning week. um me i love that title meaning that i have died and uh, people are doing a wake for me or i'm going to die and i'm doing a death party well you see that's the thing it's open-ended i can say that i in see the, okay in the context of the conversation that we had when we came up with this, someone was actually telling us about a party they are invited to. And then they found out while they're at the party that someone was going to kill themselves that night in a state that allowed for that. So it was a sort of oh. party, but, but wow. we leave what? these things kind of open in case, you know, people think of other ideas in the future. Right. Yeah. It's a dead man's party. We got <laughs> <laughs> a little oingo, a little, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> And then we had another one, for example, is what if your life became your job? So some these are not meant to be too specific. They, they're supposed to yeah. encourage you to, to, to think of all sorts of different possibilities. And we will take mm-hmm. them further and refine them when we're actually coming up with a story concept of some kind. But they're a good starting sure. point. They sort of help us uh, mm-hmm. get, our, get off on our way. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to give ourselves sort of a timer so that we're, you know, we keep ourselves on track and we're going to have a timer for, okay. let's see, I'm going to do about 10 minutes. And in, in this 10 minutes, we're going to look at a few topics, maybe three. I've got four topics written here, but the idea is to just discuss them a little bit and see what comes to mind. Because when you do this okay. with different people, different things will come out of it. So not to be too right. time sensitive, but it helps. So really, to, oh, so, yeah. so really just yeah. really free associate. In other words, just kind of like, because there are a few things you mentioned in there that I was like, well, I, I had a dream about this and it's a lot like this other movie that I looked at, you know, um, you know, just kind of associate all those things. Right. Yeah. So we're going to have a free association conversation yeah, okay. about whatever, topics come up on these cards and we're going to spend about 10 minutes doing that okay all right so i'm going to start this timer okay great there's our there's our 10 minute timer and we're going to look at the first one i I, i'm going to shuffle these up a little bit because i looked at them earlier but i don't know what order they're coming in so okay (laughs) the first one says uh binge washing (laughs) what comes to mind binge washing Yes, binge washing. Not immediately, binge washing. immediately, my OCD. No, no, no. Uh, literally, my OCD clicks in of like once I start with the floors, then I go to the windows. Especially during this this time of quarantine, I got crazy and just started to really every once you start, okay, that floor, you see all the nooks and crannies that have something bad and wrong and you got to clean it up and you you got it you the more it's a rabbit hole the further you clean uh then you look at something else it's like oh my gosh the this needs to be washed this never never ends so it's down the rabbit hole of of 
I love the term binge. Yeah, binge washing. So you can't stop. Like a, like a you know, rabbit hole. It's like laundry. Now. Yeah. yeah. The concept, too, of like, I realize laundry never ends because the thing you have on, you're washing everything, but you know that, like, you don't just go, oh, laundry, the washing, you know, like a, a you know, a coin washing, you know, or whatever place. But like, this is, this is one of those, like, where you realize, oh, no, it's, it's always an ingoing, outgoing, and, uh, binge watching you have to go to the next uh right away and if you really get involved with washing stuff or cleaning i guess i'm thinking binge cleaning you know but like uh yeah where you just uh for me washing then comes to mind laundry and that is just like oh, i just want to get it all done you know and and you know you want to get down to the last part of that hamper and nope something else comes in and you're like okay, so so it's I'm... like a never-ending treadmill <laughs> Like, or the hamster wheel of washing. Yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, obviously this, Never is, this really... is inspired by binge watching, which is the same sort of thing, like this infinite scroll hamster wheel stuff keeps coming like, oh yeah, let me try have... that. Let me try that. But binge I washing, have to see I the feel, next thing. Yeah. I think binge washing is a little different in that it's more, it's compulsive, but it's like something that maybe you don't really want to do, but you know you'll feel better afterwards. So that sort of spurs you on. It's like uh, if you want to yeah. go jogging or lose weight or something, you think, okay, you have to exercise. You know, yeah. I should do yeah. this thing. Yeah. So it's a, it, and then it does it does like exercise. You realize you can't just exercise once. You're like ah, I did my sit ups. You know what I mean? Like it, like it's like no, that's an everyday occurrence. And washing kind of becomes that. Right. A part of my head that just wants to be like, ah, oh, we're done with the laundry. No, you're not done because there's still a little bit more. Because right, the stuff but you also on, you also sort of fool yourself into thinking that you can reward yourself, right? So you've done you've done the thing, the chore, the task. <laughs> you're like, oh, now I can do this little reward for myself. But but uh, you but if you keep doing that, keep doing that, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna feel as if you're you it's empty or you you've binged too much or something's gone wrong. I I was. I think when I wrote yeah, this like laundry man after a jog. Yeah, yeah, you're like I can have a chocolate now, uh, but that's not really the case. Yeah, now you've undone everything. Right. It's funny. And then you have to do it again. If at the I'm sorry, I want to take I, I want to take your point, but like it'd be funny if your reward after washing something is to actually mess something up, you know, <laughs> like or like accidentally it messes things up. Or, what were you gonna say? You were, you said you were oh. writing something. Oh no, the binge the binge washing. I was thinking about this because uh, in this COVID nineteen scenario, you know, whenever I bring something yeah. in from the outside or or someone delivers something, I've got to put on the mask and the goggles and the gloves and go through a whole disinfecting exercise. Oh yeah. But but once you start, yes. you realize that oh, what if they touch the door thing here and what if this and what if that and then you when you go outside, you're thinking about spores in the air and everything is like a washing opportunity like a disinfecting opportunity and it's like you can't stop it's just like you're saying about the laundry i have that feeling when it comes to disinfecting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you easily see you know where howard hughes kind of got into that i know your grandfather knew him but like like that like everything it's possible it's germs everywhere and if anyone studied microbiology or learns about it, you realize just how many living things are on you all the time and most of them are actually good for you but like you know when it comes to this when something's airborne not only airborne but stays on something for a few hours and, you know yeah. and has the ability to mutate yeah, it, it really does affect your your thinking on that. And, and when you think about, oh, I'm having, you ever think about having a key? key they say keys are the dirtiest things. Oh, nasty. Dollar okay, so. bill. It does nasty stuff. Uh, most really bad, not this virus, but most bad things kind of go away, I think, in within like 20 minutes. Um, but uh, not this thing. And um, yeah, you just start to, uh, you, I got this, you know, all the sprays you got to put on and, uh, Lotions. You can get, I don't know. I don't know what's, what's that? Sprays and lotions and, and. Yeah, lotions. I don't know. I would normally say you're get, people are getting carried away, but I think right now I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I really don't think that uh, it, being carried away seems like the right idea. <laughs> it's just like, exactly. I, I mean, you know, yeah. I, 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 right. I, 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 I'm going to bring up another topic because yeah. I realized that we. We spent yes, please. six minutes on that one.
went right, over. So, oh, I got memory laundering. That's, okay, that sounds yeah. like a, uh-huh. another laundering scenario. Sorry. So I've got washing <laughs> and laundering. But memory brain laundering. Wash. Yeah, that's brain like, wash. yeah, brainwashing. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Brainwash. <laughs> no, go ahead. Memory laundering. <laughs> Sorry. I, I think I like where you're going with this. Tell me about memory laundering, and I have I might have something to say about that. Well, I don't know. I think I, I was thinking that memory laundering is there's this expression memory hole. And I don't know. For some reason yeah. I don't like that expression. It doesn't mean to me what people use it to mean. And so I, I just, I just, I literally. What do people see a use it to mean? Just like, well, they mean that you, you, you shove something down the memory hole, which means it, it disappears and never comes back, and you pretend that never it occurred or existed. And it's like we've all got this memory sink, this memory hole, sink hole. Yeah, something. unless unless and, you're me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I we, no, we I, all I have wish selective I have. memories, you know, and and so we remember the strange. Yeah, things. no, I, I would think it's like a hole in your memory, but yeah, there is that thing of. And I've even heard people say, uh, oh, let's say, okay, I, I'm going to preface this with, with I, I have lately been going through a lot of that. And I, I always have. I don't know if that's being, being raised with guilt or being Catholic. or I have a lot of like things that keep going through my mind that are useless, but I'm still upset about it. Really, like high school stuff, stuff where I, I screwed up and I lost this game for my 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 swim my swim team or you know like I like I I, I stump things that nobody cares about right now okay uh, then really big things real really big regrets like not handling a relationship thing well or not inviting that person or doing something there's so many things that I and I'm really bad about remembering all the bad you know what I mean like I I'm always feel the good. And remember, but you remember you said like he yeah, you you wrote a book and you had all these like amazing reviews and like one bad review and that was the one thing that stuck with you because you were like damn you know, yeah. you know what I mean that's kind of how it is for me too they I think about like, like all the things that I I know and I'm like I'm like oh that's terrible David and then I look it up and I'm like everybody likes it like you had so many amazing reviews on the book and it was like this one person was confused and you know what i mean but you remember the you know and, and yeah, they were that, that, that person kind of, and, and that person from you, high school i had a problem with and they they tracked me down right. gave me a bad review just to kind of get down. <laughs> no and, well, and, and you take well, it seriously and well, memory so memory I, laundering I, to me is you mm-hmm. take those memories whatever they are if they're bad memories and you mm-hmm. wash them and you kind of refresh mm-hmm. them and reframe them so well so now you, can, you reframe you can them good yeah now here's the question here, and I, it's funny you're bringing it up because I really do. I really this is a topic I, I think about a lot. Uh, do you, which a lot of people do, is they write revisionist history or they reframe the thing? My mom, who was the amazing stuff to me, and one of them was change the memory's mind, meaning don't um, don't uh, like rewrite it. Say, oh, it didn't happen, or uh, say like, well. How is my reaction to it? In other words, I can't change what happened, but maybe when I wa- in the wash here, I can I can think about like where did it bring me here, and what did I learn from it? Sometimes you don't learn crap; you learn like mm-hmm. yeah, life sucks. You know, what I mean, you know. But I'm saying, uh, it, 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 did it give you better empathy for something? Mm-hmm. Did it give you more sensitivity to people? I, my mistakes have given me so much more empathy for people who are making those mistakes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So for for so, somebody who screws up or loses their so business. That sounds to me like a teachable yeah. moment. You're sort of saying, I'm going to reflect on this. I, I, it it um, is. Uh, I like revisionist I, and, history. And my response. Oh, that was our time. Yeah. Re, see, revisionist history is. <laughs> I'm going to remember shush this, timer, David. Shush timer. <laughs> <Sorry>. okay, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, no, uh, it's just, um, it's, <laughs> uh, no, um, uh, just revisionist history is when we're saying, oh, no, everything was great in the United States. And, uh, you know, the Indians got, uh, you know, America, everyone got along. And that's like, you know, kind of, kind of, whereas that's a, a lie. My problem is I can't lie to myself. I can't say like, oh, no, they didn't mind or that didn't, that worked out okay. You know, it's like, no, that really sucked. And I made a mistake. and. And the problem is I still feel bad about it mm-hmm. and maybe that's okay, but maybe there's a thing of like where I am now in relationship to that memory and not just keep reliving it. I like this lie to myself. I don't know. This is kind of like people that can lie to themselves must have a pretty good time because uh, they, they do. 
let it go. I was actually thinking when someone it's says to you, my sociopath, entire, <laughs> it's a my sociopath. Entire, my entire child history, my child, sorry, my entire childhood was revisionist history. That would, that would be uh, perhaps a warning. That's really funny. On a first well, you and I go through this all the time. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, because you kind of go through periods where you don't remember, but you always have new information in your head. So you're constantly getting a new life. I still remember all this stuff, so I have to report back to you. And I had an acting teacher tell me that. He goes, you don't filter anything out. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, well, this he is was why, complaining people this, weren't listening. This is why I have you as a friend, because you're like my memory, because I can't remember stuff. <laughs> you know, I make say, it all up. You remember that thing that happened? And, and I'm like, no, yeah. really. And you're like, well, it was really, it was no, really interesting. I'm studying a new language. Well, the other <laughs> thing about memory laundering uh, that, that occurs to me is how uh, – in revisionist history, you make something better. And I was thinking about how um, there was some scene from the life of Brian that I would tell people about as like my favorite scene. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't seen the film in mm -hmm. a good 30 some odd years. And so I watched it with my kids and that scene wasn't there. <laughs> so yeah. What is that called? The up. butterfly effect or the, what is, yeah, it, it's, it, there's a word for it. The whole thing about the, in Moonraker, did Dolly have braces? You know, that there's a whole thing on like, did we make up our memory of the uh -huh. thing? And we do. We do stuff like that. I forget what it's called. It's, it's well, not you butterfly make it effect. Better. Darn it. You kind of, uh, butterfly effect is something that happens here. Like the, you do. the butterfly's wings causes a storm or typhoon and in some other country or something. Yes, like that. there's that. that. That's like the ripple effect. But you do. Sort. You may. You make a joke better, yeah, or the or the thing that you you your brain has polished it a little bit, yeah, you know, memory polish, brainwashing, <laughs> and oh, memory polish, I like that a little memory, a little memory. yeah, because because someone will say, and then you said that to the guy, and the guy was gonna hit you. He's like, no, no, yeah. the guy just walked away. You know, this could be, <laughs> you know, maybe it was this, like this, this could be memory polish or memory polish. I'm not quite sure what what the spelling is, but. <laughs> Um, I remember so, Warsaw well. So yeah. letting it go. All right, we out of time. All right, we got to go for another, another, another thing here. Let's see. We've got okay. Um, uh, edible art. Oh, that's great. And then when you eat the art, it causes gas. You might fart, and you are an artsy fartsy. No, it's that's. A, that's edible art what comes to your mind i mean a lot of people say i think there are companies that make things that are are you know beautiful uh, fruit sculptures and they call it edible yeah edible i mean art. imagine you went to some edible, sort like of, an um, thing. you know the opening of a of an art gallery and you see the fruit bowl and you eat it and someone's like that's that's the artwork that's what we all came to see <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yes Yes, yeah, I'm sure. I'm now sure. Or, is, or, or it's a very pretentious. But way even to say our my art that was meant to be, hmm. is art. Yes, is edible art. Actually, that would be a great thing for a chef to say. Hmm. You know, just because it is edible art. My my cuisine is like the Chopin of chopping. Hmm. No, it's a little all on the nose. If Chopin I said that, I'm sure. That, no, I mean, I I think that would be pretty pretentious if I said that I cooked edible art. Um, but I was wondering if there's could be if it could be something else, like um, like a, you can eat uh, the painting. Yeah, like uh, like some or someone who eats art, like you who could buys eat, expensive eat art and eats it. That's right. They they go to the auction house. They pay thirty yeah. forty million for a Picasso and then they eat it for dinner. Mm hmm. So that would be an art and an art eater. An art eater. Instead of an art dealer. Wow, what a strange predilection. Art eater. And then and people are upset. Museums are very upset at these guys. And because and, you're just they're all they, really wonderful works are going away. And they do the memory you laundering know? because they make things disappear. They just they turn art into an experience. They say, I'm trying to make art into a physical guttural experience. I, yes, I, gastronomical. It, it becomes I'm part cooking, of me. I'm cooking Picasso's blue period tonight and it's going to be, you know, it's combined. It gave me gas. It's the blue be period combined. gave me gas. Oh, terrible. Well, it was all about war. And, but then like, then we have a little spice with it. And, yeah, and, Guernica and then, gave me gas. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, La Granica. It's not going to be healthy. You know, um, I mean, you've got paint and canvas and wood and, hmm. you know, lead-based things, I'm sure. things that you can't. Uh, you, could, you could use the wood oil paint. bonfire. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's I, be yeah, I mean, and then and then you're like, it all becomes crap in the end, you know, like it is. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I great. um, yeah, this art, yeah, and and and, and uh, sculptures you could eat. I mean, it'd be tougher. Edible sculptures, but would be art, cool. Yeah, hmm. maybe yeah, or, or edible. Well, yeah, if it's made to be eaten, can you imagine how cool that would be? Like a uh, uh, starry night. For example, mm-hmm. and you you take a piece of it, and it and and it's like, hmm, this is a sweet part. This is a little bitter. This is, you know what I mean? Like, and, I mean, I, I could see, so I could like see a, someone actually, like a blind person that reads sugar. Braille. We would eat different parts of the painting, and yeah. it would give us a different sensation, right? It's, it stimulate sensation. In fact, I'm actually thinking I could, I could as a, see as that. A, I'm thinking as a as a kind of a a funny character. They could be someone who, for a living, they turn famous works of art into edible objects. So that people do experience. Them. I think so, that's great. So instead of being an art forger, they they do Starry Night. Like that you said, that is actually a viable. Animal. Yeah, yeah. A viable David, that's business. that's actually a viable business. Yeah, that's actually like I could see someone if they're not doing it already. I'm not kidding. Well, you know, like we have a printer that print cakes. Now you know, like you can print the photo on a cake. Like it, yeah. it, it's sugar. So there's there's these there's not 3D printing. Which you could do at a three D printer, but you know how they do these cakes is it's um it's it's sugar, colored sugar in the print, mm-hmm. you know, and it just mm-hmm. it just spits out this like a laser printer. That's how it's made, and I could just see somebody really taking that seriously, and like yeah. saying and we're gonna you... do a three D printer of, of the thinker. Well, <laughs> you know. Well, I'm thinking if you send someone a cupcake, let's say with like I... a a photograph of of happy times of you and the other person on the, on the cupcake. But when they taste it, it's bitter. I think you're sending them a message. Yeah. Yes, you are. So there could be some, I mean, sweet on the outside, but really, yeah. And I'm going to have to wash my memory of that, but it's (laughs) uh, a good phrase. I got to wash my memory. (laughs) There's no one wash my memory. There's no one tasting that man. Yeah. I used to always love saying it. Uh, you or have you tattooed taste. my mind with this, mm. yes. And what well, you know, but the flavors, if you were really going to be genuine about it, you know, that's we're talking about pastries, but like, what if you know, what would the scream taste like? Oh, god, probably you know, you know, something hot and and sour, and you so know what I mean? Like, steel. I don't know, a taste of steel, yeah, burnt, yeah, almonds. but 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 edible, well, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah that's it i i don't know there's something or, or edible art is almost a or, thing or very like lemon like the, the strongest lemon so that when you i taste see lemon screen, it, and it like... looks like a lemon hmm. it looks like lemon you know that the, the, the colors are right for that what, what you know he, so i could the, totally see what is he looking at you know the person on the screen what are they screaming about it's it's just anxiety uh, i mean edvard edvard was a uh, expressionist, he's Swedish painter, I believe, and he, but he, yeah, I think it was just, dark. just a general, genuine reaction to the state of everything, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny, hey, right I, now, because I always thought of the Swedes as being sort of happy-go-lucky people because of ABBA and whatnot, and then I know when I look I at know. how they're dealing with COVID, it's just like let them die, let everyone die, it's okay, you know, we just go about our business, <laughs> and I'm like, well, you've seen that's the really- film. The That's cinema. really cruel, you know. <laughs> so yeah, Bergman. So yeah, so there's, a, there's a mean streak in those Swedes, yeah. you know, kind of like a, a cold-hearted kind of. <laughs> I mean, I don't cruelty. know if it's mean. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's mean. I don't know if it's mean. It's just yeah, it's just it's just a, a cold understanding of life, you know. Yes, it is their and, time uh, to die. Hey, some it time, is their time to die. That's sometimes inherent in. It's inherent in some Scandinavian uh, things, and that's okay, though. Uh, and you well, could hence, do, hence Shrine, yeah. I know why monk, you know, painted things like this. It's like, it, who it, are you, people? <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say that would be. I would. I would eat that painting right now, not the actual painting. So if you eat your but, anxiety, you know, does that make you feel better? Wow. So this could be like a psychological therapy. It's like food therapy. Eat 
eat your anxiety and wash your brain. I don't. Yeah. So I, this is, uh, are you adding problems or so are you? So it's a food, I don't know. That's a good is, question. This is food therapy. I like this as a new, a new type food of therapy, um, a new type of, uh, yeah. of, of, of vocation. Like we have food therapy. I yeah. Mean, I mean, food therapy is like a family coming together for dinner, cooking a meal, sharing it together. That's food sure. therapy. But, but what if someone says I'm a Milk food therapist, therapy. I'm a food therapist and, yeah. and I help people. Uh, get over their their psychological issues by making edible art, which they then consume, and it um, purges them of uh, of their oh binge washing becomes a sort of binge eating food therapy thing. Okay, so there's lots happening here. Um, I'll add one more yeah. card just to make things really. Yeah, this confusing. would be very good for a, a particular character. No, okay, no. So, what's that? Oh yeah, please oh, go. Let's so do food it. therapist. This is my last card, and it's hoarding. Which is very apropos to now. Yay! My favorite hoarding. <laughs> See now you can't hoard the art because you haven't eaten it, so you just hoarded it. Now hoarding. Well, let, let's talk about that. That's another kind of OCD situation, and I have been accused of of these things. Um, memory uh, hoarding <laughs> for me. Memory hoarding. Yes, that's a thing. I'm collecting, I'm living, it's because you could live in the past. It's very dangerous to, you, your memories are great, but then if you're just constantly talking about um, nostalgia or this was the, th you know, remember when I did that? Remember when, and then it's, what happens is that's wonderful because you really never, should have that in life. It's like, it's never a ending. But how about, but the present is what's so important, like, or, or even where you're going. And a lot of times people don't feel like they have much of a present right now. So they kind of live with the past glories of things, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and that's okay. I mean, I'm just saying, I just, I can see how that is a trap. Memory hoarding is great. I want to take your memories too. So I want to hoard those. Well, that's kind of interesting, <laughs> right? You take somebody else's memories yeah. and make them yours. Like you start telling stories yeah. about yourself Blade and Runner. really other people. Um, oh yeah, that's, yeah. That's a Blade Runner. Yeah, it's like a Walter and Mitty kind of thing, you know? Like, oh yeah, when I was in Afghanistan, no, you weren't. You weren't in Afghanistan. <laughs> you know, like, uh, um, memory hoard. Um, uh, what hoarding and just different for everybody. Usually, it's a lot of times it's it's something bad has happened or somebody feels attachment to things. Uh, you know, and they've given them personalities. They throwing away, throwing this 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 shoe away will throw mean that like my father gave me i'm throwing away the memory of my father you know or i'm throwing wow. away you know you know so there's an attachment isn't necessarily that you love shoes or that you want a hundred you want to die with the most objects because usually it's not very the objects mm -hmm. are nothing it's the the attachment to you know the past the attachment right, so to this is like a memory to object, to, to, to like memory this person is a memory. Yeah, object, and I, this, uh, this, uh, this and I can't. Shoe. Yeah, and I can't. I can't. Getting rid of if I get rid of this thing, it either it's almost animistic. It has a life, or getting rid of it, I'm I'm not. Um, I'm 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 letting go of a part of my life, and the irony is that like no, this you all you have is you. <laughs> I mean, other than you know, people obviously are more important than things, but all you really have is that what's happening now, you know, and it's tough. I mean, I remember when my mom passed away, I was like really hard to try to get rid of things that were hers. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, you know, like, Oh no, what, what, you know, then it's like, Oh no, put this to chair. She would want you to give this to somebody, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> or this would be, you know, but it's just, mm -hmm. there, there's those things where it's, it's, it's very, it, you know, hoarding is, it, it's kind of, um, I mean, there's many facets to it, but that is a, a thing of, um, well, you're talking memory, about I still how, love memory hoarding. That's funny. Well, yeah. I think you're, you're talking about One. how, um, these physical objects are a manifestation of a person, the memory of the person. And so mm -hmm. that is really difficult. I have exactly the same problem. Things, uh, I, I remember, take, I, I remember being given some things from people that have passed that have been close to me and I can't get rid of them. They have to follow me all over the world to whatever place I move to. Yeah. And I think to myself, how can I ever 
get rid of this thing because it's almost like a burden. I keep carrying this thing everywhere, but then I can't get. Yeah, rid of you them are owned by your memory stuff. of them, and so yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a sort of. Um, I I have you know, found that photos help. Photography is a wonderful thing, and I know you're a photographer. Uh, uh, I have found that sometimes what what because it doesn't take up now it doesn't take up much space because it's all digital. Um, sometimes the picture of the thing you know that reminds you of oh yeah that was a show I worked on. Oh, here's the cover. Instead of holding onto the script, maybe I just I have oh. I have a picture of the script or the. Do you know what I mean? I know yeah. it sounds really dumb because my wife is completely the opposite. I mean, she's selective about what she keeps, and the stuff she keeps is perfect. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, this is the doll your grandmother had. You know, that's you know what I mean. Like that's and it's it's an antique and it's all this stuff. Oh, um, but she doesn't like try a, me. I I uh, I just had so much something stuff. worth something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, or just, you know, I don't know, at least maybe one thing as opposed to 10 things, you know, um, and and so uh, I would love to do a, a, some project about about that. I, I wanted to do an animated pixelation thing about that, where this guy is just overtaken by his stuff and his stuff follows him. You know what I mean? Because it's just like, but he, but he's, but he's, it's, he's got to swim through it. You know what I mean? To get just to the bus or go to the, you know, the, the store or whatever. And it's just like, you're carrying around your baggage. And, uh, but if you eat that special art, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you'll, you'll wash your brain of it. Well, um, I guess, I guess you could but eat it, the it, things. It, it, Instead of having the spiritual burden, you could try to eat the stuff and then it's part of you. And now you can say, <laughs> you I got rid of it that way, you know? Or, or you take the photo, yeah, you eat as the long photo, as it and now hurt like, you. it's part of me now. So, hmm. Yeah, that was like that scene in Red Dragon, you know, where he's eating the Blake painting, painting, you know, the drawing. Oh, um, okay, all right. Yeah, I don't, I, I, oh, you haven't seen it. It's a great scene. Ray Fiennes is eating this, like, gets the, gets the dragon, you know, the man dragon uh, drawing from uh, William Blake. He just, um, mm. just goes into the museum and just devours it, and just like a, like a Eucharist, you know, he becomes becomes this thing but i i yeah that would be interesting um i'm thinking what else uh, uh just trying to think what other subjects hoarding is i mean its own topic and and people really it's a it, they suffer is hoarding from a sickness? i mean this is a so really hoarding bad hoarding can be a sickness yes then. it's like a it's oh, like oh a, it's a horrible horrible thing that people go through they they get like themselves they can't get out of their houses hmm. It's very sad, actually, and and these people. And the worst part about it is, many many of them, including myself, know it's weird or wrong. Like they know, like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. You know what I mean? Like this is as opposed to what's wrong. It's like, no, I know, I, I've collected too much stuff. But then when you have to get rid of it, there's something. I don't know what it is. There's something that makes you just go, no, don't do that. You know. And if you can just get outside of yourself for a minute mm. and go. I don't, why am I holding, why, why? Well, you gonna, know, like, why am I doing this? I'm going to add this yeah. idea that maybe obesity is like hoarding because you've had all these. It is. Well, you're the art eater and you, 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 all these wonderful experiences and meals and you just accumulate them on you and you could then feel it and say, yes, yeah. I have the memory of all that wonderful sensory pleasure. I need to, I need to finish everything around me. I need to protect myself with do, with an do, extra do layer. You find that you need I mean, this is barring anyone. Plate, by the way, are you someone who has to finish everything on the mm -hmm. plate, or can you just leave it? I used to. Yeah. yeah. Then you yeah. are. Can you finish it? Yeah. Do you have order. to? <laughs> a food order. Era child. Uh, and then the other, it is well, it is it is it's that, and and I mean, barring anybody that has a physical, you know, uh, it's just it doesn't, you know. Uh, process fats well or whatever that's a different story but but like um yeah there is a little bit of that like uh, security and mm -hmm. wanting wanting to eat the world not not literally eat people but like devour the experience of everything you know the fear of missing out guy you know what i mean where you just want to like take in every experience everything you know no matter you know and you like you can't do all that in a day but yeah you can i want i'm in paris i want to do everything hmm. you know and uh, there's that again lust so for life or gorging. that kind of appetite yeah 
gorging on life. Well, I mean, you know? there's a, a lot of um, people, human beings, eat some pretty strange stuff, which makes me think of that that wet market in Wuhan, where supposedly this virus came from. They were eating what pangolins right. and other civet cats, or God knows what. And so, like, human beings just love to eat stuff of all kinds, and <laughs> it's almost yeah. as if. I mean, the art eater is another kind of possibility, but we just consume all kinds of strange things. And it's our way of, I guess, eating our way through the world or something. Yeah, I mean, there, you know, the human humanoids, <laughs> sorry, you, you know, uh, the hominids, the uh, they, uh, the sapiens, the, you know, they're the, being omnivores. They, they pretty much whatever was available, whether it was root vegetables or whale blubber, you know, it was like whatever they could. So the, the palate is is very wide ranging, mm. you know. I mean, I, I mean, I could say the same thing for a coyote to a certain degree, you know. It's like, oh, it, well, whatever is running away, it's smaller <laughs> than me. I'll oh, try, yeah. or you know, for a frog, it's whatever fits in my mouth, including my offspring. You know, it's like, whereas like, um, uh, but um, for humans, yeah, there's a lot of reasons we do stuff more than just food survival. It's I enjoy the taste. I enjoy being the power. I enjoy this, 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 this uh, fried catfish brings me to a place that my mother made this. It brings me back. It's memories. It's, you know, why do people like, you know, I, I, one time I wondered, why am I really into this fruit punch? Like about, you know, 15 years ago, I had this, I had a studio and they had like, uh, you know, Hawaiian punch or high C. And I just, mm. man, I haven't had this in a while. You know, and I just kept drinking it. Kool-Aid. You know, like, why am I so, and my, my, my director friend, <laughs> he goes, Fred's he's like, well, it's childhood memories. Yeah. No, exactly. He said, no, it's childhood memories. It's just your, your association with this thing, you know, is your whatever. It brain can be Hawaii, is getting in the way. Be, yeah. Yes, uh, my art complex. Yes. Which made me think about the somebody that brain. uses um, their, their art eating as power. It's like they... They see some work of art that someone has slaved and labored over, and they say, hmm, that is nice. I will eat that. And so to, yes. the other, to the artist's chagrin, they eat, they purchase and eat the artwork. Yeah. Um, and that's a sort of a power yeah. play of some uh, kind. All right. I'm going to move us quickly yeah. into the next session, which is that this is going to be 15 minutes. And the idea here is that we sort of take on board the discussion we've had – and I'm going to um, take um, what I call premises. Now, premises, which I use as story premises, are like adages or idioms. Okay. Okay. And um, I'm going to sort of shuffle these as I'm talking. I've written these, these, all these idioms on these cards. And we're going to look at three idioms and see if they can sort of relate to some of the topics that we've discussed. So I'm going to okay. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to start the clock now. Let's give us 15 minutes. So the first one off the top is don't count your chickens until they are hatched. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. Does that, does that go with anything that we've talked about? Don't count your chickens until they've hatched with memories. Or hoarding, I guess I sort of see a little bit of something. Well, let's think about it. The, the, you know what the meaning is. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, be, don't assume you have something when you don't. Mm -hmm. Maybe your memories were not what they were all cranked up to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, the idea of don't, it, it's more of a cautionary saying of like, don't, you know, mm -hmm. don't I'm collect, say, you know, maybe there's a, yeah. I'm going to say it kind of goes well. Maybe there's a the hoarding two. element. Yeah, like you, that you sort of feel, let's see, what could it be with like memory and laundering? That you think that you're you're cleansing your past by revising things, but really yeah, you're, you're doing you're something, really not. something not. Yeah. You're doing something terrible. You're you're creating such a fiction. Or, you're, or even ineffectual. Yeah, or maybe nothing will change for you. You'll just relive the memories. Or you can't remember who you are. You get to the point where it's like, who am I again? Because I've, I've revised so many of my <laughs> past so many... memories that I, that I've sort of created a sense of uh, multiple split personality now. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, it could be been many things. Over could the could years. be literal. Yeah. You could have lots of 
you could hoard lots of chickens and then um <laughs> that could yeah that could create a Don't that get... can create a call or... a, a, a pandemic outbreak at your meatpacking factory like it has <laughs> at, at tyson foods you know you can uh Hoard those little yeah. chickens. I don't know if you've ever seen those videos a little of, of how, how those little oh. eggs are hatched and little chicks and they go down this um all this sort of mechanized oh. horrific uh, shoots and all this stuff. It's pretty 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 scary. I'd have to look for that video. And see oh boy. Find it. Yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll look at it another time. That's too that's too frightening. Um Yeah, you're gonna have, you're gonna want to wash your memory of that. But you can't all right. So okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll put that uh, yeah, aside for a moment, so much but, stuff. But yeah, that, you're assuming uh, you're assuming basically that you're doing something really good, and you're really not. You're, yeah, don't yeah. count your chickens until they're hatched. All right, so it's a cautionary thing. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna pull another card off the top and see what we get. Mm -hmm. um, the search for happiness is the chief source of unhappiness. Hmm. Wow. Okay, I. Yeah. Okay. Collecting all your stuff. There's a great Buddhist saying about that. Like, why have I collected so many things? You know, and it's like, really, you, you think that's going to make you happy. And it really, it doesn't. The beginning of your problems, you know. Um, that really does you know, go with these uh, two again, because it's like you're hoarding mm -hmm. in order to have a stash to make yourself feel secure. But it's not leading secure. to a sense of security. or You've created instability. Oh. Um, yeah, no, the happiness saying is there. It's just the idea that you're pursuing fun or try to pursue, like, I, you know, maybe you, you're going for the path of least resistance or you're you're going for something that's that's maybe, you know, who knows, you know. Yeah. And, and so I can see this sort of the hoarding works nicely with that one, I think. You're... I mean, it's a bit literal. It's a bit on the nose. Also, because things. Yeah. Also, things in life won't make you like life isn't. I mean, happiness is one of the greatest, but you can't live your life avoiding pain or sorrow, because it just it it, it will be there for you. It's always something, and it's going to be different from everybody else. You know, some people it's going to be great tragedy. Or it might just be a failing grade or something. But no matter what, there's, there's, it's unavoidable. Unavoidable. Mm. Um, trying to pursue what makes you happy might just be a, a fool's errand. You know. Mm -hmm. Happy Friday. Okay. No. Thank you. <laughs> happy Friday. Okay. I'm gonna come up with another one now and see what happens. I do right. children's party. <laughs> I come over to depress children. Yes, it's my my forte. Is, <laughs> I, yeah, is I come and tell stories of the Downer Spanish the Clown. <laughs> Downer the Clown. <laughs> hey, it's Downy the it's Downy the Clown. <laughs> hey kids, this is as best as it gets. Yeah. <coughs> ha, you know. Yeah, I got nut cancer. Let me look, tell you yeah, something. Yeah, it's looking looking at this yeah, crowd yeah. here. I can tell you the two of you'll be dead in twenty years. So. Enjoy your childhood. I'm gonna tell you, not not many are gonna make it. Yeah. Tell you what, yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here comes. Down, the next uh... One. uh, okay. He that is discontent in one place is seldom content in another. Okay. So that's sort of like wherever <laughs> you go, there well, you are. Well, that's kind of the opposite. Yeah. So if you're just a curmudgeon. Yeah, that's a tough one. You're discontent in some place because I, I I have found that I can be content in one place and discontent. They are the almost the opposite because one is saying don't bother pursuing happiness. The other one is saying, well, if you're just going to be down, <laughs> mm -hmm. you're going to be down somewhere else. And you know that person that's like it's always going to be something. But I and we know them. Debbie but thing on that is that that I I think on a, it gives them joy. Because it's good to be right. I knew this was going to be a horrible movie. I knew it. You know, I knew this person was not right for me. What? You had a great date. I know, but you know what? Yeah. So what is <laughs> I'm that? About that's to like be insulted, a, I can tell. That's a, that's a protection mechanism where you didn't want yes. to admit to having some hope. You're just sort of shutting it down like, Correct. no, no, there was. Hope is a great killer. David, 
Yeah. Hope is a horrible killer. Hope is, you know, the idea of being like, oh man, I'm really, this will be great. And if you have enough life experience, some people, the, no, don't take that away from me. I'm going to be excited about the possibility that I got that job. But then, you know, I used to have, whenever I had something happen, I never wanted to talk about it, you know, because I, until it happened, afraid that, not that I jinx it, but that I'd be so disappointed. And we have this whole thing about we're afraid of being disappointed, uh, afraid of, 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 you know, oh, I lost. I'm going to win this one. So the best thing is to have any, you want to go Marcus Aurelius and not have a response at all. You know, like just, just be like, well, this could happen or it won't happen. And, you know, it, it really don't like being let down and to the point where they're relieved when something doesn't work out either for them or someone. Hmm. No point. No point. I told you, told you. You're going to fail. Someone's going to, someone's going to screw you. You know, you know what I mean? And it's like, it, 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 it makes you feel kind of, yeah. Cause God so, help you. If, if it works out, if you get what you want, you know, like, Oh so, shit. So hope you is know? just lying to yourself. It's like, why do you lie to yourself? You know, it's going to get badly. <laughs> What's the point? That's the yeah, hope buzzkiller. And, killer. and the yeah. dumb, <laughs> and the dumb thing is, is that might be your life experience. Hope you know, it might be any time I felt good about something, it was taken away. Remove your memory of losing. You know, <laughs> you want to wash your memories of, of your, of your, you know. But then, then that's a dumb thing because you don't want to make the same mistake. Cleaning the slate, same things that that led you to peril, right? Have you? I mean. So I don't know. So when I, but, uh, when I yeah. pulled this card out, you sort of mentioned that there are places where you can be content, where you can't, where you're discontent in other places. So you don't, yeah. Um, this this point saying that wherever you go, there you are, and if you're kind of an unhappy person, you'll be unhappy anywhere. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's true? That's true. You know, that right, that so. is true. So it's I think that's true if you're genuinely unhappy. For example, if I move, if I go, God, I'm miserable. I hate this place, I moved to Hawaii, you know, you might actually still be miserable in Hawaii. Hmm. Now, if there's a very specific thing of like, no, I'm living in a very abusive relationship. Hmm. I need to get out of it and then go to Hawaii. You might go, no, you know what? I'm better now. You know? Hmm. So I think, I think the, I think the saying is talking about people who are just ornery as a principle, you know what I mean? Oh. Like you're just going to be sad. Your problems was, follow you everywhere. Your problems follow you everywhere, like your stuff. You know what I mean? Like that's your the baggage. Hoarding. Your your you know? your your problem. The hoarding. hoarding. Yeah. I was also thinking of misery likes company. This I. So that, you're. Because because this idea. That misery loves company. That that you're discontent in one place, seldom content in another. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing because the person could say, "Yeah, I I like being miserable, and so I look for other places." Of that's misery. fair. And that yeah, makes I, me that makes me feel I, like I understand the world. The world fits my understanding. I know we have hmm. correct. And I'm okay being miserable because it brings me joy when I when I do have the slight bits, it makes it that much better. Hmm. It just means I'm being honest. And I'm yeah, but, I'm you know, and I, we have friends like last. that. Hmm. No, but that's that's why you savor it. Like edible art. You savor this moment. Because you know, I mean, look, it's not going to end well for any of us, really. I mean, unless, you know, there's the next universe. But, like, pretty much no one gets out of here alive. So, you you know, you only got so much, you know, a number here. Um, and so you might as well take it the good while you can. But, you know, it's ultimately uh, hmm. it's all crap, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that's the character. Yeah. So I was actually thinking of um something kind of silly which is that you have a a, a misery matchmaker like a misery matchmaking service because you say i'm miserable that's great and, and when i i want to mm -hmm. look for other miserable people because misery likes company i don't want to go on tinder or one of these services that just shows me like happy interesting people i'm miserable i want misery yeah and and that miserable couple that they have to be miserable in the right way though together they can't be miserable at each other, but like, yeah, man, party blows, doesn't it? Yeah. Hey, you're, 
You know, they can't be around a positive person. <laughs> yeah. And oh my God, that goes back to that saying. If you're... That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, lighten up. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Uh, yeah, because if I think the saying is is basically, yeah, if you are genuinely miserable, uh, you know, in a positive person, a bad place to be a positive spin on it. Miserable, you're going, you might want to find somebody that um, can the share the misery. The strikes me commiserate. as saying, commiserate, a com- com- commiserate. This sounds like a, the same miserable person would be like, don't count your chickens until they're hatched. Don't you know? Everything ends in disaster. So, uh, <laughs> That would have been great on the dating game, wouldn't it? Like it was one person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, have you had any interesting have you had any dates in the past like that where where you just realized that, that oh, this sure. is this person is really a you know a miserable person? <laughs> oh sure. And, and you're too Absolutely. Happy to and, and and I have friends and I have friends that I adore that are miserable. You know what I mean? They're not, not, they're not miserable people. That's a bad way to put it. They're really actually good people, but they just, you know, how's it going today? You know, I don't know, man. It doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, you know, like, and I've been there too. I have to be honest with you. I've, I've had those moments. You see everything else is how I have more gratitude than that. <laughs> you know, a little more gratitude helps. You know, for what you have and what, you know, what you think could be a big plus for that. But um, it doesn't require you to have to be happy. It just means, oh, I'm really grateful we can have this conversation or I have a friend like you. Or, you know, a lot of times the miserable person doesn't, like, takes for granted, like, what's the good there, you know, or, or doesn't see all all of that well, well, I think, I, stuff. Yeah, know. I think sometimes that, you know, having a friend... They make the funniest people. Yeah, that's, I just agree with you. I think that if you are generally kind of a happy person, then having a miserable friend can be sort of helpful because it's amusing, but also they can kind of... Uh, they can re- make you reappraise some of your assumptions because of the way they think. That said, being in a yes, relationship... Yes, I have a, like a, a friend like... Uh, mm-hmm. Being in a loving relationship with a miserable person could be quite difficult if you're happy-go-lucky because that could be truly miserable. But but having them as a friend yeah, too. Yeah, you know, because in the kundalini energy, yeah, you're you you know, there's some people who are energy drainers. Like the kundalini goes down, you know, all of that goes away, just negative all the time. It just gets like tiresome, you know, just like a happy person all the time might for some people get tiresome, but, but, uh, cause it's under the guise of not being real. Well, I, I have a friend that is just honest and he, and he gets mad. Uh, this is a director friend of mine, hmm. you know, it says the thing I was kind of thinking, but I would never dare say it. Right. But mm-hmm. he's genuinely happy. Like I could tell this guy is the most generous. He's the sweetest guy. Or got this, you know, he's hmm. got this tough exterior. But he's actually a, you know, total teddy bear you know, underneath. But well, yeah, but he'll for, say stuff where you go, oh my god. Yes, I can't believe you just said that. But I mean, that sometimes that's just a way of sort of setting expectations. Yeah. All right. So now I'm gonna move us to the last phase, which is oh yeah, uh, 15 minutes and taking on board all that we've discussed. We're gonna just come up with some of these what if questions. And let's see, how can I start us off? I. Sometimes I sometimes I like to do okay. this by turning things on their head. So, so for example, maybe in the search for happiness, hoarding could hoarding ever be a good thing? Like you know, we 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 were sort of told it's bad. You know, if you all the stuff doesn't bring you happiness, but what if what if there's uh, other times when it does? Um, or or maybe throwing away stuff is sort of exci- it sort of brings you know um, like the Maria. Marie Kondo sort of thing where it's like, I'm going to go through my life and throw everything away. It's going to mm-hmm. be so liberating. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And some both of both could be. Yeah. 
I keep going back to the dream thing, mm. the dreams. <laughs> but uh, yeah, too much. What was it, May West? Too much of a good thing is a good thing, you know. Like <laughs> maybe, maybe there is, maybe there are things that are okay to hoard, you know, mm. like right. Uh, Hoarding but what happiness. would you're saying when would those things be good? Yeah. We hoarding happens. Hoarding for good. Well, I mean, I could see for survival, I could see for survival, you know, there's some cultures that believe you should have at least a year's worth of food. And I think you know, there's a few there are cultures that are like, no, no, it's not hoarding. It's just saying being prepared, being mm -hmm. reasonable because then you might need all this stuff and you know, nothing wrong with that. I don't think. As long as you're not being greedy or taking from other people, then that's that's not even hoarding. That's just stealing. But do you know what I mean? Like, but what is um, hoarding yeah. generosity? I cannot I, stop giving to others. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay, hoarding generosity. I just came up with a kind of just very simple one was what if hoarding friends can save your life? But I think I like your hoarding of generosity. Sort of hoarding the good things, the hoarding <laughs> your collection of friends, your generous to the idea of actually doing good things, you know, or <laughs> helping as long as you're not, yeah, uh, how to transform that into the element of taking something, turning that into giving, you know. I mean, anything at its extreme is detrimental, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so I, I'm gonna sort of write this. Another one I thought of here is sort of this: uh, what if you could launder memories to become more generous? So somehow you are a stingy, like a Scrooge, or you're miserable, but you can go through some process whereby you can reinvent, reimagine yourself, and now suddenly you're not like that anymore. That's a brainwashing, I suppose. Um, it sounds like brainwashing, yeah. but maybe it doesn't have. Yeah, you're quite basically, like you, you know, as they, <clears throat> they quote that. Yeah, guns and roses. There's a few to use your illusion. Basically, you're using your, yeah, you're using your imagination to form into something new. So let's say illusions. Uh, so what something if, that you prefer. So yeah, so illusions might be a positive. And that may change your. And that also changes your memory's mind, buddy. Mm -hmm. That also changes how you you are connected to your past. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, oh, everyone picked on me, or rather, you know, my father was abusive and he did this. And then to say, oh, no, my father was abusive. You know, he was sick. You know, mm -hmm. I learned a lot about that from him. But I also am not going to be enslaved by the memory. You know, okay. not going to so... be enslaved by my past. Mm -hmm. So that's like brainwashing. So, I don't know. so what? And maybe if uh, let's see, brain washing can liberate us from our past, right? So that's uh, you know very simple. And if you could create but, but... dreams, if you could create dreams for people that 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 let them into that part of their mind or that world, mm -hmm. I know that's very much the cell. I know that's very much Inception. I had, I used to have lucid dreams about, it was the weirdest thing to you. I had dreams that I, it was the, it was so crazy. I would, I would be lucid dreaming so I could really have limited power in my dream. Like I not have manifested, but I, I could go over there. I knew I was dreaming and I was tripping out talking to someone I knew was made up. Okay. And they told me they were made up too. I mean, it was, I had a series of these dreams. <clears throat> and then there was one where I got to be a character in someone else's dream and that there was someone else that made the set. And I became this lion uh, where I was talking to a, who was thinking and, and, and literally I went in the past. This is the weirdest dream. Uh, apparently I went into someone's dream uh, to, you know, 150 years ago who was thinking of leaving his family. And, and I had no real control over like a lot of things, but then I remember I, all of a sudden it was like a script was flowing through me 
And I was like, you have the heart of a lion, yada, da, da. And I realized that I, I was there to scare him, but, but then talk to him as this lion. And at the end, it was like, God, this is weird. It was like it was doing theater, right? Mm -hmm. But out of time, <laughs> you know, and I didn't know the guy. But apparently I, I was able to, you know, transform into something. And I, we were all worker bees. We were just there for his dream. And then we were out of it. I thought, what an interesting idea, you know, like, and then there's so been movies that kind of did that. I, yeah, so you I put think. on a performance in someone's yeah, mind. There's, uh-huh, as, as a character, as a whatever. Actually, you know, and, given, given And it was to help of, them, though. Yeah, but given this situation we're in now, we're doing so much stuff virtually like you and I are doing right now. Maybe, like, instead of doing performances on Zoom, we could do performances in people's heads and we have the technology. So we can get together and say, mm -hmm. all right, we're going to put a dream on for you tonight. And, uh, you know, what kind of dream would you like? And they sort of, you know, say a few things like, "That's don't worry, we got the dream, the perfect dream for you. And then that night, there's a dream performance. So, okay, so let's see yeah. what if... And uh, and maybe gives you the message I need to hear. Give you give them something that they want to hear that's life affirming, or you know, you know, there's going to be a whole bunch of guys like I want the porno, but you know, I mean, but it'll be like most of it is like what what do I need to hear right now that will like shake me, you know, shake my bones or readdress a memory, or how would I have liked this thing to go differently, you know. Mm. And what could I have done and what could I do now that would make the past valid or, or like so, maybe I, I make, make the past something that was, that I could actually use for good as opposed to just having it uh, weigh me down in my yeah, hoarding. So actually, memory. so I, I, I think this is a really interesting way into, I know that there are stories that have kind of tackled this before, but this is an interesting new way into the idea. Yeah. Imagine that what you're doing is a person is dissatisfied with something. There's something they did in their past and it's still unresolved and it's bothering them. And so instead of having a time machine, you say to them, well, we're going to put on a dream performance for you. And in the dream performance, you take them back to their past in their mind where they can recreate the situation exactly as it was or as they remember it because it's their mind. And you as actors in their mind start taking them through a new kind of um, on the cusp, uh, what, what's it, um, a performance that's not scripted, you know, like an unscripted performance where. Improv. Or, improv, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so they've, they've sort of, the, the, the performers have studied you a little bit. They, they have some thoughts as to what characters they can play, but you present certain individuals and then they inhabit that individual and they put on a performance and they help you work through the past so that when you wake up, you feel cleansed as if this has been resolved. Now I, I can move on. So these are like dream performers or dream. But you, the problem. Yeah. I like that. And the thing is, is that you ultimately know that it was a performance, right? So it didn't change your memory. You still have the knowledge or that you didn't, didn't handle that situation. Right. Uh -huh. That's what I mean. Or, or or are you saying, I need to rewire, sort of like shock therapy, I need to rewire how, how this went so well, I can move on? It might be that going through this experiment experience teaches you that you needed to make this mistake because it taught you something. So the point is it was a teachable moment, which is something we have here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Th this dream, yeah. sorry, this event <clears throat> in your past was a teachable moment. And all you need to do as understand what the teachable moment was. And once you do that, you say, okay, I made the mistake because I needed to learn something. And these performers yeah. have helped me take me through that understanding. So I can't change the past, right. but now I don't want to. I realize that it was important to me. So it's sort of a, yeah. a way of, um, yeah. so it's the, it's the search of happiness. So the idea is that the search for happiness is the chief source of unhappiness because you're, searching to undo the past or searching to correct something. And so the dream performers say, we're <clears> going to help you understand that you don't need to correct that. That mistake was needed to be made. And now you're going to learn from and it. And maybe bring in a different point of view. Like, let's just say the abusive father, get into his brain or what you think his brain might've been, you know, oh and then we get not the to forgive it. Where it goes down the rabbit yeah, hole of different not people's to, brains and memories. Not and, to forgive it, not to say, oh, it's all forgiven, but just to understand like, no, you know, when, when kids have to 
humanized their parents. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. they were just, you know, Fred and Sharon or Michael and Jane. They were there. We think of the mom and dad. They can't do wrong. You know, and then you think, no, they were 30 years old. This happened. You know what I mean? Or this, they were just trying to figure it out just the way I am mm-hmm. with kids or so, whatever, you know. So, so this, this is a memory laundering service because it's not changing the past. It's getting you to re re see it think so we're so re-experience we're memory, it so it's a memory laundering performance and to go to sleep you have to eat some art <laughs> <laughs> well indeed i don't know what, what? The binge watching is but i another let's see so how could you let's see so then well we yeah the whole... you could you could keep you could get addicted to that you could keep reliving your life yeah now i'm so putting aside the dreams for a moment now i'm kind of interested yeah what do we do with the art eater because well the art eater could actually be eating photos of your life you could be you could actually have photographs or images or paintings of your past and you eat those you go to sleep and then we we rework it (laughs) i don't know you're eating a family photo it's a little weird but yeah (laughs) let's see i'm gonna just say um I just, I have no idea. I'm going to put this out there as what if you could hire an art eater? I don't know what the art eater would do. It's just to remind me of this conversation that, you know, what does the art eater do? Because I mean, that that's kind of an enigma in and of itself, you know. Oh, let's hire an art eater. You know, we have this situation, whatever it is, let's hire the art eater or something. I will say this, the next time someone asks me what I do for a living, I'm going to be like, I'm an art eater. What? Yeah, no. <laughs> Like what is like, that? I'll art tell dealer? you. No, no, no. We're an art. No, no, no. Art, I, you eat art for a living. No. Yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, there's some. There's ways to tie that in. I don't know how. That could actually be one of the dreams. You know, because you don't always have to be realistic past. It could be, mm. you know, art eater could just be a character in this thing somehow. <laughs> I'm gonna add it's like a to separate. That. I still think it's a business, but yeah. Art eating business. I'm gonna add to that also. Yeah. What if you could eat your own, eat your anxiety? Um, yes, somehow most definitely. You can manifest your anxiety as food. Substance. Yeah, and that could be in your dream. That could be in your dream. We just now have boiled this thing down, baked it into a cake. <laughs> now you eat it. <laughs> you know. So then yeah. the other thing I was thinking of is that, you know, this binge washing for a moment. Um, murder cake. Yeah. Mur- murder right. cake. Uh, is I was thinking, oh, yeah, that somehow. R- been- rape cake playing this summer. No. Was it? Yeah, that's that sounds like the remember the rape bear blog. Um, no. Remember that thing that, that existed God. long ago, the beginning of the beginnings of the Internet. And oh, it was sp- supposedly that whole phony. um movie pitch to spielberg God. rape bear <laughs> that takes terrible. me back that takes me back <laughs> anyway. um, so so bin- <laughs> binge watching washing mm-hmm. and discontent i was just thinking about the anxiety involved in in that you, you mentioned howard hughes that nothing can be clean the laundry never mm-hmm. ends this desire to to you know, like there's a member, there's a member of my family who will know who they are if they hear this, who um, cleans incessantly, and um, and while you are still eating, they want to clean up all the plates and things, so that you know you're you're you're, you're eventually left kind of holding your plate as everything is being cleared, and you're still yeah, and you're and you're eating faster because you're feeling you know like you've got to kind of get a move on because yeah, I got I got to go they're, with the schedule. So so. Um, that kind of that's like when my dad went it was, OCD it, it, sorry, washing yeah yeah so like an OCD washing thing but it's my mom made the bed right after my dad got up my dad got up like early one morning it was like some ridiculous hour to go to the bathroom and she came back and the bed was made <laughs> oh we just went to the bathroom it's like yeah. oh it's time to get up is it yeah you know, it's like it's sending like, a wait, message what? you're lazy I know get out of bed, uh, you're lazy bum um, right no, just I have to get it done. I have to clean. I have to, yeah, um, yeah. That's so funny. It's true, though. That's that's a thing. All right, I we have to kind of come to an end here because it's been an hour. And well, I guess 
This has really been incredible. Thank but you. I, this is I, really. I added a funny thing there at the end that I don't know where to put it. it just says, if what a fake well, news can give us a brighter future. It was sort of like the turning something. Yeah, well, that's fake, th- fake. That's news a real thing. Part of this, you know. Yeah, you know. Your revisionist history. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, this is this is then we have to decide the value if this is a very good thing or bad thing. Re- revisiting the past, I think, is great. And then, but if it becomes a big lie and you believe the lie. That might be a problem, but if you reconnect to the what happened and change maybe how you are in it, then that might be positive. Do you know what I mean? Changing how you feel about, oh, let's say you got picked on a lot as a kid and you just, you keep thinking about how all these bullies and these bad, you know, um, I'm making this a very PG version, but like, you think about like, Oh, I should have stood up to him. I should have done this. I should have done that. And sometimes that can turn someone into a very angry, petulant person. Who's like, I've always been picked on. So then they become this really angry, uh, person or they feel like they've never been had courage. Whereas what would it be if I looked at those bullies and say, man, two things. One, this teaches me how to stick up for myself, uh, the dangers of not sticking up for myself, and then maybe even having empathy for the bullies themselves, realizing that they're in a trap too. You know, maybe maybe somehow I, I have a different perspective on this now as an adult, for example. You know, mm-hmm. maybe these bad things, maybe... You know, it's always, this is kind of a side note. This is sort of a martial arts or a boxing thing. You know, I always worry about someone who's never lost or, you know, never lost or even lost a person. I mean, I don't wish anyone tragedy, obviously, but you become incapable. It it becomes harder and harder if you've won all the time and then you finally lose. You know, sometimes it's good to know the balance of going like, oh, this is, this is how, this is how you, you know. Show me a loser. I'll show you a lo- good loser. I'll show you a loser. Sure, that's there. Mm-hmm. But like, if if I'm saying if I, I know how to accept things with grace, or know how to improve, mm-hmm. to to just because the world is failing me right now, maybe I can think through the problem as opposed to just throwing up my hands like I did today on a technical thing. But you know, throwing up my hands and and saying. Screw the world, screw everybody, and then being like saying like that's I'm gonna get my way if I throw a temper, you know, tantrum, you know, as opposed to like, hey, maybe I can reconnect how I respond to bullying or reconnect how I respond to any of this stuff that bothered me in the past, and so you're no longer the victim. Yeah, you're. What you're saying is like, uh, yes, people who take a victim mentality and say, you know, I couldn't be, it couldn't be helped because I was in this. The situation and you're talking about mm-hmm. reframing it somewhat i think this conversation reminds me of how you know we're we're kind of gone we're, we're having gone through a period where we want everyone to feel inclusive included and so yeah. you know the children you know participate in competitions and things and then they're all given awards to say that everyone's a right. winner and and there are people that think that's wonderful and people that think that's terrible and so the people think that's terrible are saying, well, you're not teaching them how to fail and how to accept failure and not to be jealous of their friends who, who did well. And, you know, there's all these sort of ugly or difficult mm-hmm. feelings that you have to work through. And that's what failure does for you, teaches you. And so if you take yeah. away failure, you're just creating a bunch of uh, kind of narcissistic uh, people who, who are going to really crash when something goes wrong. And, and I think right. there's uh, some, some and... truth to that, yeah. I, I I really feel that way. And then maybe there's another way to look at failure, you know, or to say like, well, what can I learn from this? Cause that's how you really, I mean, that's how you, you, you learn. I mean, the ones who have been really hurt, like you look like a Frederick Douglass. How did he learn to read as a slave is he would go up and he, he'd say, I could read. And they'd say, Oh no, you can't. What's this letter? He goes, it's a C. No, it's an F. Okay. That's an F. Oh, uh, that's a, you know, he, he played it. So then that's pretty soon. Now he's reading the paper by the time he's like 13, you know? Nice. So it was kind of a, yeah, it, not, not saying you have to be, he had to survive, but I'm saying, uh, people can turn their, their situation over. 
you know, in a different way. Opportunity, yes. Um, mm-hmm. A little bit, as long as it doesn't. As long as, <laughs> yeah, as long it is, or it doesn't twist you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, sometimes too much adversity can twist you too. You know, but. Uh, and on that note, happy Friday. Yeah. Happy Friday, everybody. All right, Fred. Uh, I'm gonna, here, let's I'm do gonna... it. Let's do an outro here with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. And uh, no, right. no, sorry. I like your David. Like ab- yeah. I like the little, little audio sampling tidbits. Here. Yeah, the little sampling tidbits. Thank you. That, it's that, been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm so glad you did for me too. Great right. to see you. And, and let's do more. <laughs> Take care, buddy.